Hi, I'm Phil Needham with Needham Ag Technologies. This is a video specific to the 60 and 90 series openers, such as what's on a box drill, a 1560 or a 1590 box drill, or an 1860, 1890, 1990 or 1895 air seeder, in addition to the new Pro Series openers that were released during early 2018. This video is going to discuss some of the wear and seizing up issues within the depth adjust system on this opener, in addition to the disc hub bearings. Some of the drills and air seeders out there have got enough acres on them now, some of the bearings are starting to fail. So we'll show you what to look for and how to change the disc hub bearing in this video. To remove the gauge wheel, you'll need to remove the 5 8 bolt using a 15 16 socket on an impact as shown here. Now we need to remove the depth arm. To do this, you'll need to remove the 3 8 nut and bolt using a 9 16 wrench and socket. Now you'll need to tap the depth arm off, preferably using a large hammer, similar to what we're showing here. Now you'll need to remove the depth adjust knob. To do that you'll use the same 916 socket we used a moment ago and lift off the depth knob off the top of the depth arm and remove the depth arm. Now we're going to remove the grease fitting. In this example it's metric so you'll need an 8mm socket in this example. Now we need to remove the gauge wheel axle. A lot of guys press them out with a large press, like what we're showing there. Some guys try to hammer them out, like we're doing here intentionally, which often mushrooms the end of the gauge wheel axle. If it damages the gauge wheel axle, because it's ruined anyway, you'll need to saw it off with a reciprocating saw, like what we're doing here, with a fine blade. So if it's ruined anyway, cut it off with a reciprocating saw. Now you'll need to clean all of the debris off around the disc blade and around the 1 and, and 11 16 socket because this piece will be disassembled next. So using a 9 16 socket we're going to remove all the 3 8 lock nuts to enable us to remove the disc blade. So here we are doing it with a 9 16 socket, preferably an impact socket. So we're going to remove the disc then we're going to remove the nut that holds the hub in place. Again, this is a 1 and 11 16 socket. This is a left hand opener, so it will, need, it will have left hand threads. Right hand openers have right hand threads. So when holding the end of the spindle as we're showing, it will allow you to rotate and remove the 1 and 11 16 lock nut. Once you've removed that lock nut, you can remove the hub. Then you can remove the spindle with the damaged axle through the middle of it. Here's the large hub seal, you can see it's damaged. Here's the bearing which got dust in it, contaminating it, leading to failure. So you need to clean out the hub housing or the, or the assembly using a pry bar. Then you'll need to remove the large wear ring. This wear ring is old, it's pitted, it's damaged, it's corroded, you need to change that. Then we're going to remove the large hub seal, again with a pry bar. Now we're going to remove the snap ring with a good pair of snap ring pliers. You'll see what I mean when you try and remove these because it's quite a sturdy snap ring and it will need a good pair of snap ring pliers. Now you need to hammer out the bearing once the snap ring has been removed. If that bearing has been in there 10 or 20 years, it will take a lot of hammering. Now we're going to remove the small wear ring and clean up the hub with a wire brush as we're showing here on an electric drill. Once you're happy with the cleanliness of the inside of the hub, we're going to lube it with some light machine oil in preparation for installing the bearing. These are the parts that you'll need to rebuild the hub. You'll need a large hub seal, a large wear ring, two small hub seals and a small wear ring. This is the NTN bearing that Needamag supplies. It's pre-lubed, sealed, and has two tapered bearings within it. And we prefer to install them with a large press. Once the bearing is pressed into position, we're going to use the same pair of snap ring pliers to install the snap ring. Then we're going to install the large hub seal, preferably in a press, preferably with a flat surface to press the seal into position. 
Now we're going to install the small wear ring into the hub, again using a flat surface to press it down flat and evenly. Now we're going to remove the small hub seal off the small bushing and clean up the bushing in a wire wheel grinder like what we're doing here. Be sure to use goggles. Then we install the small, hub, uh, small triple lip hub seal onto the bushing again with the same press. Now we're going to clean out the inside of the housing with a stainless steel brush in electric drill as you're showing here. Actually we're using two different brushes to clean out the housing. Now we're going to install the large wear ring using a piece of flat metal and a bolt like what we're showing here. These are the parts to rebuild the depth adjust assembly if you need all these parts. There's a gauge wheel axle, two spindles and a depth arm with washer, nut and bolt. Here's the spindle. In this example, it's a left-hand spindle with a triple lip seal. We're going to press it into position. We're going to reinstall the washer. Then we're going to reinstall the hub. We're going to press in the hub in place so the large hub seal presses into the large wear ring. Then we're going to put the bushing back in with the small hub seal on the end, pressing it into place. Then we're going to put the nut back on it. Remembering this is a left hand opener with left hand threads. This needs to be torqued to 190 foot pounds. 190 foot pounds with a 1 and 11, in, 11 16 socket. Then you're going to press the other small hub seal into place. There are different tools to press it into place. This is one of them. Sometimes the little tool is quite difficult to get out. Here we are removing it out of the small hub seal. Next we're going to install the disc blade back onto the hub. We're going to use four one inch by three eighths grade eight nuts and bolts. And we're going to torque all four bolts to 40 foot pounds using a 916 socket. So here we are torquing them to 40 foot pounds. On the right is the Needamag gauge wheel axle, which has a machined flat. Now the left hand axle does not have a machined flat. Most of the early 60 and 90 series openers did not have, the later ones did. So ours does have a machined flat. You can machine your own flat on your own gauge wheel axles if you wish. We're gonna grease it, in this example with Lucas Extra Grease, then we're going to reinstall the gauge wheel axle through into the hub at the correct angle which is up and back. Then we're going to install the 0.9 inch washer onto the gauge wheel axle if you're using the Needamag depth arm and install the grease fitting. Now if your cover or depth adjust knob are worn, here's a good time to replace them. Now we're going to reinstall the depth arm. This is the Needamag depth arm. It's made of steel, high quality steel, not cast like the John Deere ones, so it will last a lot longer. To do this, you'll press it up through the cover, put the spring in place, then the knob, and then you'll tighten the nut on top. So using a 916 socket, we're gonna to torque the nut to around 40 foot pounds. That's a 3 8 lock nut. Then we're gonna tap the depth arm over the gauge wheel axle as we're showing here with a hammer. Then, then we're going to install a 3 8 by 2 inch long grade 8 nut and bolt. And we're going to torque that nut and bolt assembly to around 40 foot pounds. Here we are installing a gauge wheel. This is a Needamag spoke narrow gauge wheel assembly. So you need to select the correct amount of washers to allow one eighth of separation at the closest point between the disc and the gauge wheel. This is because when you press that opener down into the ground, that gap will close up. Then we're gonna to torque the 5 8 bolt, if it's grade eight, to 180 foot-pounds. 
We recommend Lucas Extra Heavy Duty Grease. We've had good luck with this and lots of growers have too. It works well in dry, dusty environments as it's more stable than lithium grease because it has a high pressure additive package. That concludes this instructional video on the 60 and 90 series John Deere openers. Hopefully you found it useful. For more information on more of our products, including those that you've seen in this video, visit our website at needhamag.com. And also feel free to like or subscribe to this channel on YouTube so we can update you with new and upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.